Welcome to another episode in the Kane Forensics video series. Today, we are going to be talking about the launch of Kane Release 13, codename Warp. Kane is a live distro created for digital forensics and managed by Professor Nani Bassetti from Italy. Kane offers a complete forensic environment that integrates open source software tools with a friendly graphical user interface. The big change with Kane 13 is that it is now based on Ubuntu 22.04, which is an upgrade from version 20.04 used in Kane 12. So what does this mean for you? Well, Kane 13 is now using Linux kernel 5.15.0, which provides a new NTFS file system driver called NTFS3. Kane 13 has an in-kernel SMB server to provide faster file sharing and more features for Samba servers. Kane 13 has improved support for read-write operations, new hardware support for AMD CPUs and GPUs, uh, Apple's M1 chip, and other updates. Kane 13 can boot on UEFI or legacy BIOSes, and it is now installable, which was not available with Kane 12. The upgraded system tools include Firefox version 111, LibreOffice 7.3.7.2, and Network Manager 1.36.6. Unfortunately, with Kane 13, some forensics tools have been removed to keep the size of the ISO to 4 gigs. The main tools that were removed are Autopsy and GIMP, so you will just need to download those yourselves once you have installed Kane 13 to your VM or forensic workstations. Please help me out by hitting the subscribe button so it can get back on the dance floor. I've had requests in the past to demo running Kane in a virtual machine and also for an installation video. So I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate running Kane 13 in a VirtualBox environment. You can download VirtualBox free for your Windows, Mac OS, or Linux platforms via virtualbox.org. There's also a developer preview for Macs with the M1 and M2 chips. And as you can see, VirtualBox supports various flavors of Linux, including uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Ubuntu, Debian, OpenSUSE, Fedora, and others. Once you have VirtualBox downloaded and installed, we can create a new VM by clicking on the New button. The first thing I have to do is to name my new uh, VM. So I'm going to type in Kane-demo. The next field asks for the folder to store the VM, and I'm going to leave it as my default location. The third item is the location of the ISO image. So I'm going to point it to my Kane 13 ISO. And after that, I'm going to hit Next. For the hardware settings, I'm going to up my memory to 4096 megs or about 4 gigs because I have enough memory to do that and I am also going to assign two processors to the VM. If you have more resources and you plan on using your VM for heavy processing of evidence, I would recommend giving the VM uh, as much memory and CPUs as possible. And when I'm done, I'm going to hit next. Right now we have the virtual hard disk settings. I'm going to ask VirtualBox to create a virtual hard disk because it is a new VM and I don't have an existing uh, virtual hard disk. For the size, I'm going to choose 35 gigs just to make sure I have enough space to install my operating system and my tools. And when I'm done, I'm going to hit next. And we are greeted with the summary page. So let's take a quick look here. The machine name, check. Correct ISO, check. 4 gigs of memory and 2 CPUs, check. And 35 gigs of disk allocated. All good. So I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. This brings us back to the list of VMs. So seeing how the newly created VMs is selected, I'm going to click the Start arrow on the top here. And we get a new window with VirtualBox running. And we immediately see the Kane 13 Warp Boot menu. I'm just going to select the default boot option and the system will run off the ISO and continue to boot. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you're not sitting here waiting for this thing to boot, but it really doesn't take that long. Once it's done booting, uh, we're going to have a fully functional version of Kane running off the ISO. 
And so that's the problem is that it is running off the ISO. So every time you turn off this VM, anything that you have changed it is going to be erased and you're going to get a fresh install every time, which may be what you want to do, but sometimes you don't because let's say for instance, in this particular case, uh, because um, autopsy is not installed in the ISO, we want to install it and make sure it is there every time we reboot. All right, so let's perform an install of Kane onto the virtual disk drive so we don't have to rely on the ISO and we can make additions to the system which are now permanent. First thing we need to do is to click on the unblock icon over here and launch the unblocking tool as it is on by default and prevents the virtual hard drive from being written to. After the tool launches, we see that the only drive is the 35 gig virtual hard drive and it is marked read only. So let's go ahead and select it and click on the unblock. Now we see that the drive is read write. Now we can click on the install cane 22.04 icon. When the install panel pops up, select your desired language. I'm going to use English. Then it will ask you for your keyboard layout. And again, I am going to choose the default of English. Next is the updates and other software panel. And you can select to install third-party software for graphic and Wi-Fi hardware and additional media formats. For the sake of speed in this video, I'm going to leave this unchecked. But if you want to for your hardware, your specific hardware, you can go ahead and check that. And now it'll ask you for the installation type. You can choose to erase the hard disk and then install Kane. Or you can do other customization like create new uh, partitions and, and have a multi-boot. Since this is a new install on a blank drive, I will leave the default of erased disk. Next is the confirmation that the selected disk will be partitioned and formatted. Make sure you double check to make sure that you have the desired drive selected. Now, it's nothing worse than wiping off data drive or something. In my case, I only have one drive, which is named SDA, so I will click Continue. Next, you will be prompted to select your time zone. I'm going to leave it as the default of Eastern Time Zone of the United States. Next, you will enter the name of a user account to create. And you also get the name, the machine, and the password. And then lastly, you get to choose whether you want to log in automatically or require a password. So for security's sake, it is always safer to ask for a password before you get to log in. Uh, you can also choose to use Active Directory if you are on a domain and have that running. So when you're all ready, go ahead and click Continue. And now the virtual hard disk will be built to run Kane 13. And this takes a little while. Um, on my system, it took uh, maybe 12, 15 minutes or so. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. And once the installation is completed, you will be asked to choose whether you want to continue testing or playing with a cane or to restart now. So I'm going to go ahead and restart the machine. And you will get a prompt to hit enter after you have removed the installation medium. This is usually for uh, a, a real machine where you can unplug the thumb drive. But since I'm running in a VM, I will just let VirtualBox handle that. So I will just hit enter. Now the VM is rebooted. And you can tell that it is no longer running off the ISO because we don't get that boot menu asking for which uh, option, right? Live versus uh, to memory or some of the other modes. So it literally just boots all the way through until you get the login screen. So here you can type in the password. You get logged in. And we are now running off a fully booted version of Kane 13, which is installed on the hard drive of the VM. Enjoy! For more videos on the Kane Linux distro, make sure you watch these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.